This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Nicole Keyes from Michigan Works. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Nancy. And today we want to start out talking about the wonderful job fair that's coming up. I know you have over 45 vendors lined up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have over 45 employers currently signed up to be there. There might be more in the next few weeks. Um, but there's a lot of like really big <coughs> hires. Excuse me. And there's uh, even some smaller people who are looking for some, some good work for the summer or long term. And we want people to know that most of these employers, if not all of them, are looking for good qualified candidates. Absolutely. Okay. And in preparation of that, you're offering some classes at Michigan Works. Yes. Uh, we have a job fair prep class happening on April 15th, which is a Monday, I believe. We're going to offer them at 10 o'clock in the morning and have a couple hour session. And then again at 6.30 p.m. So that way we can get people who might have to work during the day to come in in the evening and get ready for that job fair that'll happen the following Tuesday. Okay, and, and these prep classes, people think, you know, I don't need to go to a prep class, class but maybe you do. Maybe you um, haven't worked in a while. Maybe you're looking for a specific career. Maybe you um, don't know how to dress. You don't know if your resume is good enough. These classes are wonderful to find out all that information. Absolutely. We have people who will wor work with you one-on-one -on, -one, um, on each of those categories. We can do resumes, mock interviews. There's, um, you know, how to apply for some of these jobs, make sure your application looks good, uh, the help that you can receive for that, we'll show you how to dress nice and what not to wear. So there's a lot of things that we can offer. And you know, you only have one chance to make a first impression. Mm -hmm. And these um, employers, vendors that are coming to the job fair, they, they seriously want to get some good applicants, they want to see some nice resumes, mm -hmm. they want to see some nice applications, and they want to talk to some people one-on-one, -on -one, and it's a wonderful opportunity for anyone seeking a position in our community. It really is. It's a great chance to network as well. So even if you know, you're thinking maybe I'd like a career change, uh, go and talk to some of these employers. They'll be able to give you more details on it as well. Give me an idea of some of the sectors that will be there. Uh, we have healthcare who's going to be there. That's probably a really big one. Okay. Manufacturing. Okay. Uh, there's a few hospitality. So okay. if you're looking for something fun to do part time, that's a good one. Um, somebody, teens who might need a summer job, there'll be a lot of opportunities for them as well. Okay, and how far of an area do you um, do the employers come from so people know, you know, where jobs will be located if they were to get hired? It's mainly in Alpena, okay. uh, but we do have a few employers coming from Alcona County as well, okay. probably Lincoln Harrisville area. Okay, and I think we have uh, Roger City as well. So you you've got quite a quite an expanse. There's some from Hillman even uh, will be attending. So. Okay, wonderful. So. And the date of the job fair is? April 23rd. It's a Tuesday. Okay. We're going to hold it at Alpena Community College in the Park Arena okay. from 3 to 5 p.m. And I think that's all the details I have on that one. Okay, so come, <laughs> bring, your, bring a lot of resumes, mm -hmm. you know, come prepared. There'll be tables for you to sit at mm -hmm. to be able to fill out the applications and then bring them back and talk to somebody and one-on-one -on -one. and then hopefully, I know we've had some great success in the past with people getting hired at the job fairs. Yes, the job fair, I've never heard anything bad about it um, from either the, the job seekers who attend or the employers, you know, everything works out really well. Okay, and now I know Michigan Works offers a bunch of other services, so give me an idea of some of the other services. One of the major things that we are doing right now is every Tuesday, um, starting I think at about 11 o'clock, we offer workshops very similar to the job fair prep classes. So if you can't make it to the Monday specific job prep job fair prep class, you'll be able to come any Tuesday of the month um, and, and take part in those workshops and learn the things, the resumes, interviews, how to apply for jobs, okay. um, and maybe what employers are looking for in an employee and how to get the help to, to qualify yourself for those positions. Okay, now those are um, services for job seekers. What do yep. you do for employers? For employers, um, I'm a business solutions professional. Okay. So I work one-on-one -on -one with owners and managers of businesses um, across Alpena and Alcona County to help get them what they need. And that could be employer or employment. Uh, they need people to, to work in their facility. Or it could be um, maybe some training dollars. We offer that as well. There's a lot of, of funding available through the state that we can help people uh, build themselves up, become more competitive in their field. 
Okay, so prep classes for people looking for jobs. What other mm -hmm. things do you do for people looking for work? Looking for work. Um, well, we have the Pure Michigan Talent Connect, yes. which is all of our job listings across Michigan, especially, you know, you can narrow it down to our area. A lot of our employers will utilize that service. And one-on-one -on -one help with a lot of stuff. And um, I think that's the important thing. If yeah. you go in and, and you might say, oh, I saw that so-and-so company is hiring, and you might have an insight on that company mm -hmm. and say, well, we have the applications here, and you know, someone can help them fill out the application, maybe help them answer some questions. Mm -hmm. If you're not really good on the computer, there's always someone there to help you fill out online applications and so that you do it right, because like I said, you only get one chance to make that first impression. That's right. Okay, and I know you have a big, huge event coming up in Onaway. Yes, we have My Career Quest, and it's a hands-on learning experience for students from 7th to 12th grade to come and really explore career fields, manufacturing, technology, healthcare, construction, um, which are, are really in-demand fields yes. right now. It's what people are, are needing. So we're looking for volunteers, if anybody is willing to come out and help us with that. Um, to help these students really grasp what it is that they could do with their education, whether they want to go into vocational trade or um, higher education. And there'll be people from all over northern Michigan, mm -hmm. employers and vendors that will be at this event. Yep. It's a great opportunity. Okay, and Nicole, what's the best way um, for someone to get in touch with you if they have questions about what we talked about today? A really good way is to call me. Uh, I have a cell phone number. It's 989-306. 7288. Okay. Or you can email me at keysn at nemcworks.org. Okay. And if they stop in, what are the hours at Michigan Works in Alpena on Michigan Chisholm Works, Street? Uh, Monday through Friday, we're open about 8 to 5. Okay. And then on Thursdays, we open at 9. Okay. But still open until 5 every day. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, Nicole. And I look forward to hearing the great success of the job fair. And thank you so much for the time and energy that you've put together. Or, put out there putting this event together. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nancy. Thank you. I'll be right back with Amanda Kacherik from Besser Museum following these messages. Welcome back. As promised, I'm with Amanda Kacherik from Besser Museum. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. It's nice to I, be here. It's <laughs> nice to have you here, and I know, as usual, Besser Museum has a ton of things going yes. on, so I'm just going to let you start us out and Sounds tell us great. what's happening. So uh, members are going to be receiving uh, spring newsletters pretty soon here, okay. and so um, I'm just going to go through and start with some of the new events that we have going on. We're going to be having a lot of uh, more like weekly events going on. Okay. So yoga is starting back up again with uh, Paige Trisco. And so uh, yoga takes place every Tuesday from 5.30 to 6.30. Okay. So you can come over and enjoy some nice relaxing time. We also have two new things that we're going to be offering. So we're going to have some late nights at the museum. Ooh. Thursdays and Fridays. Thursday is going to be our game night. And so if you head over to the museum, it's a... BYOB, but bring your own board game. Okay. And so uh, if you bring uh, your board game over to the museum, we're going to be open from uh, 5 to 9 for oh, wow. games. Uh, we'll have some planetarium shows while you're there. So it's encouraged to uh, bring your family, bring young people. But speaking of family, Friday is going to be our family night. So we're going to have um, the planetarium shows open. Uh, there's special rates for families. So same uh, opening schedule, 5 to 9 will be open. Um, we're hoping that people will be able to come from work, be able to spend some time with their family. I know it can be hard to get over there during our regular yes, open yes. hours. And uh, sometimes people are busy during the weekend. Yes. So we thought we'd offer some weeknight activity times. What a great idea. And I have a friend who went there the other day and um, she hadn't been there in a mm -hmm. while. And she was just amazed at the, the juried art show yes. and at the Avenue of Shops. And she had taken her mother with her and it just brought back so many wonderful memories. And she just, she mm -hmm. just said, I'm going to make this more of a, a regular routine. Well, that's one of the best parts about coming to the museum is we're, we're uh, looking at the history of our community and we're sharing that with everybody. It's a family connection. It's friends and neighbors, and, and that's what we hope to be as a museum, is this connection point for everyone. Well, you do a very good job of it. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, those are some of our weekly nights, but okay. now talking about new things that are coming up at the museum. Uh, our two uh, art shows in the galleries are still going to be up for a little okay. while yet. Uh, so if you haven't checked out the uh, non-juried The Winter Blues exhibit, it yes. is still up until the 13th of this month. Okay. So you can still put in a uh, uh, your... Voters' Choice Award, so we're still holding that, so you can still pick that out. 
um, but pretty soon if you come through you're going to see we're under a little bit of construction Ooh. because we're opening up at the end of this month April 27th uh, our many inspired steps Apollo 11 uh, 50th anniversary kind of celebration and so that encompasses a lot of educational elements oh, wow. uh, we'll be having some really exciting exhibit panels that we'll have up on the walls uh, we have a whole host of new planetarium shows that you'll be able to take in. Uh, some of them are starting right now in April. Okay. So if you come to the planetarium, a lot of the shows that we have going on now uh, relate to science and exploration uh, past the moon and into the stars. Uh, one of which is actually uh, an Apollo 11 kind of historical deep dive into what we had to do to get to the moon. and. That one's really my favorite. Oh, I bet, mm -hmm. I bet, and you know, it's such a fascinating thing, and, if, and it still is today. It is. It's still so relevant today. And that brings me into one of the other things that we're gonna be doing with this exhibit. Uh, we'll be hosting a community conversation. Um, so that is gonna be coming up in uh, end of May. Okay. So May 30th, uh, Tim Kuhnlein from ACC okay. is gonna be helping to facilitate this. We're inviting the community out to take part and share some of their memories of when they saw uh, the mission to the moon unfold in real time. Um, maybe some people are learning about this for the first time. Um, it's kind of a way that we can connect all of our friends and neighbors together around this event. Um, and so I am, as the education coordinator, um, I'm talking to people who have these stories. Uh, so if anybody watching has oh, okay. a really great uh, memory and story that they'd like to share, I am doing some video interviews Ooh. with people that I'm hoping to share with the uh, students and visitors that come through the museum. Um, so if they have an interest in talking to me about that, uh, they can contact me through my email at okay. the museum, and that's just education at bessermuseum.org. Easy. Yes, very easy. And now will you be having school groups coming through? We will. So that's going to start kicking up uh, probably end of this month, early into May. Okay. Um, with the new exhibit opening up at the very end of this month, okay. I think a lot of uh, groups are going to be aiming to come okay. see that. Um, there's a real uh, interest and focus in science in the classroom and how that yes. all relates to all those yes. other uh, activities. So we're going to have a lot of really great um, activities for the kids. Wonderful. Now, um, yeah, and I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything else. Um, we do have a couple of new exciting things going okay. on. Um, in May, we're going to be hosting a membership drive. Okay. And so if you get uh, the newsletter, you're going to see a whole host of really interesting information. Um, you're going to be entered into a drive, uh, a, a, drawing? Um, a drawing, I guess okay. is the better word for it, uh, to win a really great uh, Mackinac Island visit package. Ooh. And so there will be more information about that coming out very soon. Um, there's also a connection with our uh, Alpina native painter, uh, Noel Skiba. Ooh, and so I if see you want to check that out, that there's was, some really great pictures. I figured pictures. that was Noel. Yeah, so um, if you uh, check that out, we're going to have all that information coming up pretty soon through the website. Um, we're also going to be uh, having that exhibit opening. It's April 27th. Okay. Uh, it's going to be celebrating uh, the museum itself. Um, we've got a reaccreditation that we're uh, celebrating soon. Um, you'll see lots of new information coming out about that as and well. And if you remember, you get special invitations to things, and yes. it's a, benefits uh, are worth it. Plus, they are. It's it's way less expensive than paying to go in the door each time and see everything. Exactly. Um, so we did just have a really exciting uh, March museum or uh, member appreciation, okay. and so if uh, members in March came in, they were able to see as many planetarium yes. shows as they wanted to see. And so uh, we really want our members to know that there are great things that are out there for them, for them and their families. And it's real important too because the money raised for the membership drive and when you come in the door, that's what allows us to have these great exhibits. Exactly. And the family nights and the educational services and all the yes. wonderful things, the Fossil Park and all the other mm -hmm. great events that you do year round. So oh, that's yeah. important that the community supports that. Exactly. Um, there's always something going on at the museum. That's it what is. I always say. And we are still, I know it's not summer yet. We had that little bit of snow this morning, um, but our log cabin day will be coming up. And okay. so that's June 29th. And that's so. one, another wonderful event yes. that happens every year. And it's just so fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope everybody in town goes to see it at least one time because it's well worth it and you need oh, to yeah. do it. It's wonderful, um, and it's something that I had remembered from my childhood, and now I work there as an adult, and so it's something that you can take with you your whole life. Okay. 
So just check the website is the best place? Yes, so uh, our website, uh, bestermuseum.org. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, okay. so there's a lot of information out there. Um, we are also working on our Instagram, so Ooh. check some of that out. You'll see some new posts coming up there as well. Hey, thank you so very much for being here. I look you forward to talking me. to someone next month. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning, Jess Rupert, communications technician at Alpena Community College. Hello. Welcome, Jess. Hi. Um, I see you're wearing a, uh, a blue ribbon. Yes. Or turquoise. Uh, teal, actually, teal. is the official color. Um, I'm wearing this ribbon because April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and as part of the Cleary Committee, I have kind of been in charge of Sexual Assault Awareness Month and all of the different activities at ACC over the past few years. A very, very important undertaking. We appreciate your doing it. And um, as I walk down the hall, I, th I think uh, to great effect. Now, uh, what are some of the things you're doing? Um, we have a couple different activities going on throughout the entire month. Um, one of the biggest and most prominent ones is that outside of the bookstore, we have a information table with different flyers, handouts, um, resources, things from Hope Shores Alliance. And then what we're doing is we have students working at the table every day from different student groups. And we're asking students, staff, members of the community, just anyone who walks by to sign a pledge sheet where they're pledging that they will stand up to sexual violence. And so then, we're taking those pledges and hanging them up on the walls connecting Besser Technical Center and the Newport Center building. And it's just so powerful when you walk down that hallway and when you turn that corner and you just see the walls completely lined with pledge forms of people saying that this isn't okay, this can't continue, and we're gonna do something about it. You're absolutely right about that. It is a very powerful image. Um, I saw it yesterday evening, there must be 150 of them taped to the walls there mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, when you see that how does that make you feel? I think it really says a lot it says that the entire community of ACC is standing up to sexual violence they do not agree with it they just want to be able to say this isn't us this isn't who we are and we want to make sure that anyone who's been affected by it knows that they have our support. Wonderful. Um, you had referenced in your first answer Hope Shores Alliance. Yes. And could you speak a little bit to, to their involvement and, uh, and why? Yeah, so Hope Shores Alliance, the kind of community outreach in this area, um, we have such a great partnership with them and I'm so grateful for their help. Um, this is a very difficult topic and I would never want to bring up emotions in anyone without having a resource for them to connect with as well. So I always want Hope Shores to be involved. They are truly the go-to people for this and they're just so supportive of everything we do. So they've provided some of the information for the table. Um, we're working together on a couple different events. We're actually working together to plan a candlelight vigil that mm -hmm. will be at the end of the month. And so I'm just so grateful for their partnership, not only in this, but just in general, and the fact that we do have them in the community. Right, a, a, ter a terrific resource for, uh, for folks who need to deal with this issue. Absolutely. Um, you had referenced the uh, the vigil on yes. I think it's the 24th? Yes, so we are planning a candlelight vigil. It is going to be Wednesday, April 24th. It's going to start at 7.30 p.m. Um, we are hoping to have it outside of Besser Technical Center towards mm -hmm. Johnson Street. Um, I mean, ideally you would love to have that event outside so that people driving by or the community can see it and just see the power. But since we do live in northern Michigan, um, <laughs> if all else fails, we will be having it in the Besser Technical Center lobby. So with that event that is open to the community, um, there's going to be a couple different speakers at it and then a candlelight ceremony and an opportunity for anyone who wishes to speak up. And this would be a way for folks who have who are survivors of sexual assault or to... It's for really anyone. Um, okay. 
I mean, if you're a survivor of it, if you're an ally, if you're just a community member who just wants to see how close to home this can hit. And so it's really open for anyone. Wonderful. And that starts when? That will start at 7.30 p.m. Okay, very good. And uh, you had uh, referenced also your work on the Cleary Committee, which yes. is a very influential and an important group uh, at the college working um, to protect students um, from sexual assault. Mm -hmm. um, could you speak to that group a little bit and, what, um, yeah, and let, the read, uh, let the viewers know what goes on there? Absolutely. So the Cleary Committee that we have at ACC was formed as a result of the Gene Cleary Act, which is federal regulation regarding sexual assault, violence, any type of statistics like that on a college campus and making sure that students or potential students know how safe they would be at an institution. And so the Cleary Committee consists of really just members from all across campus. We've got faculty, we've got staff, we have legal team, um, the Alpena City Police, and then also Hope Shores Alliance serve at it. So it's not just about making sure that we have the statistics out there, it's also, okay, what are some ways that we can go above and beyond to help improve things? And that is, uh, from my vantage point, you f the, the cult, it's a, a kind of a cultural um, focus on this issue as something we, we not only want to be compliant mm -hmm. with, but uh, we want to eradicate. Absolutely. Yes. So we, Jess, we have about a minute left, and what would be um, your long-term vision about um, you know, sexual assault awareness and, and how that uh, could, could come to bear even, even more effectively at ACC? Um, I think what I've done every year for the past few years for the month of April for Sexual Assault Awareness Month is always look at, okay, what did we do before? What can we do to improve now? So every year I'm looking for new ways that we can go above and beyond because I want people to feel supported. I want to show that this is not okay at ACC, Alpena, Northern Michigan, anything. And also I try to raise money for Hope Shores Alliance because they are such a great partnership for us. And so ultimately I just want anyone who has ever felt like their voice has been taken away to know that they have a voice, they have support, and there are people who are there for them. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your efforts in that regard. We really appreciate it. And thank you folks for watching Talk of the Town. We will see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your host, Nancy Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.